Good day, class. I have come your way with another lesson. Still on the various components and parts of computers. Uh, this is also to give you more understanding of the various components of the computer. Basically, computer have two main components. That's the hardware component and also the software component. As I indicated in my earlier lessons, the software components are basically the computer applications or programs that are normally developed to control the hardware components. In fact, they tell the computer what to do. And with respect to the hard, uh, the software components, or with respect to the hardware, uh, the software, you can have the operating system or the system software and the application software, which I have already explained in my earlier lesson. Now we want to talk into details about the hardware component of the computer. There are many parts that computer, there are many parts that work together to make the computer work. And the hardware are parts of the computer, including the processor, the memory chip, input and output devices, tapes, discs, and modems. And hardware components can be categorized into two. We can have the accessories and the main hardware. And with the computer system, when you talk about the computer itself, that's the main hardware, we are talking about the system unit that houses the processor. Any other component that is connected to the computer, that is, that is connected to the system unit is called accessories. So all the other accessories or all the other components apart from the system unit are called accessories. And examples are the input and output devices. And as we move along, we'll go into details and look at some of the examples of the various input and output devices. The central processing unit, that is the CPU popularly called, a typical example is what you can see. That is a popular Pentium. But now we have moved away from the Pentium 4, the Pentium 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we are into the eyes. As you ask, you, sometimes you hear someone say, my laptop is i4, i5, i7, and what have you. In the old days or previously, the most popular ones that we were using, I can't remember when I was a, a university student doing my computing course. If you, if you have in Pentium 4, then you were that a B student or you were that a B. I, I quite remember at the time I was using Pentium 1. Things have changed. So this is a typical example of a, a, a processor that is Intel Pentium 4, which is found inside the system unit. So as I have already indicated, the system unit houses the, the various internal components of the computer. The chip, that is the CPU chip, the, uh, the chip or the chip or the chip that interprets and executes computer program instructions and manages the functions of input, output, and also the storage devices. That is what we call the processor. And the typical example is the CPU, the central processing unit. It's called a processor. I have given an example as the Intel Pentium 4. This is also the AMD 64. The computer case is also called a system unit. They contain the major components of the computer. It also helps protect those components. That is the cable, the hard drive, the memory, and others. This is just a typical example of a, a, a desktop. The case, a, a computer kit that is a desktop, as you can see, but it varies. The component varies. That is the, uh, the position. This is the built-in handle where you can hold. This is also the power button. This is the drive base where we can, uh, you have the, uh, the, uh, uh, the hard drive, uh, sorry, where you have the, comp uh, the CD ROM drive, the DVD ROM drive, the floppy disk drive, which is also here, and also the front USB port. Where you, uh, when you talk about USB, we are talking about the inverse serial uh, 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 bus port, where you plot in your, your, uh, your pen drive, your, uh, your system unit, sorry, your keyboard, your mouse, and the rest. 
but we'll talk about these things into details. This is just the inside of the computer keys, where we have the power supply. This is also the 5.25 inches drive base, the 3.5 drive base here, and also expansion slots. Expansion slots are basically slots within the system unit that helps you to expand the capacity. I mean, the processing uh, uh, capacity of your computer. For example, if you have a memory of maybe uh, 64 RAM or uh, uh, 64 megabyte, you can add on. If you have, uh, 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 if, if, you, if your machine or if your computer doesn't have a video card, you can add on. So as the name implies, expansion slot. You can clock, you can in slot and also on in slot uh, memory and also video and also audio cast. A monitor, which is a typical example, and, and I would say it's one of the most popular actual device that you can find around. It just is a display screen to provide output to the user. It is where you view the information you are working on. There are examples of uh, output device. And the video card connect the computer to the monitor. It is a circuit board attached to the monitor board that contains the memory and the other circuitry necessary to send information to the monitor for display on, the, on your screen. So for example, if you have a, a computer that has a default video card, it will be very, very difficult to see videos or to see pictures and on your on your monitor, it helps. And this uh, keyboard is also another example of an input device. In fact, it is one of the most popular input device. The two most popular input devices is the keyboard and also the mouse. The other, we also have other input devices, but they are not popular as uh, keyboard and also mouse. The keyboard is used to enter information to the computer and also give commands. A keyboard can be equated to the normal typewriter used by uh, those uh, 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 commissioner of old people that we normally see them around our court. So this is just an example of them. The mouse I have already mentioned is an input device operated by rolling its ball across a flat surface. The mouse is used to control uh, this, the, uh, is used to control the on-screen pointer by pointing and also clicking. That is double clicking and also dragging objects on the screen. Once I have mentioned clicking, I want to take this opportunity to explain what we mean by double clicking. Double clicking is clicking the mouse twice on two succession or clicking the mouse twice on two succession, meaning when you click, you don't leave a space. When you click, you don't leave a space. That is dub, click, double clicking or clicking the mouse twice on two successions. The touch pad is also a, a, a pressure sensitive and motion sensitive if I use in place of a mouse. It's normally found on, a, on, on computer. As you can see, this is the touch pad. That is where you, you place your, your fingers to, to, to operate the, 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 your mouse on your screen. This is also your CD-ROM drive, the drive that plays CDs and also reads data that has been stored on the CD. Compact this, a typical example of an optical storage device. You also have the DVD, which is also another form of uh, uh, disk. There is also the floppy disk drive. This drive is not popular nowadays, but in the old days, that is during our time, we used to buy floppy disks and uh, keep data on. But now things have changed, and the, the, the amount of data that we normally use is not advisable to even copy them or, or, or store or keep them on a floppy disk drive. But basically, for the purpose of for academic purpose, a floppy disk is a disk that holds a removable floppy disk when in use. That is also read and write has to the diskette. What we put inside the floppy disk drive is what you call a diskette or floppy disk. So we put in, or the, the computer is able, is able to read, or the computer can access, read, or write data from a floppy disk drive or a diskette using the floppy disk drive. This is also a hard disk, a magnetic storage device inside the computer. It is one of the most basic storage devices that you can find around because they are normally found within a, inside the computer. 
So they are the, 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 the drive, what people normally call drive C. That is the, 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 the most common one that you can have. You buy your computer, you already have your hard disk inside. This is just an example, a picture. We also have the random access memory. It's a computer's temporary memory, which exists as chips on the motherboard near the CPU. It stores data or program while they are being used and requires power. Meaning that once your power is off, you lose the data on the RAM. That is why people normally say it is a temporary uh, and also volatile. They store data temporary and it is also volatile. The opposite of RAM is also ROM. That is ROM is can store data permanently. We also have a printer, which is also another type of output device. An output device that produces a hard copy on a paper. It gives information to the user in a printed form. So you are able to print your pictures, you are able to print uh, your assignment, you are able to print on a sheet of paper using this type of output device. This is the printer. We also have a barcode reader. It's an input device that converts a pattern of a print bus into a number that a computer can read. They often used by business to quickly put input price and also product information. When you go to the mall or when you go to a place like a Mercom or any of the malls around and you buy your item, the tell uh, the, 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 uh, the 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 teller or the business person sitting there will just use the, the, the barcode on the on the item to just read the information on the item. So the divider we use to read those informations on the item so that the system can, the, the computer can easily interpret the cost of the item, maybe the expiring date. Is, uh, the divider we use is what to call the barcode reader. We also have a scanner. It's also an input device. The barcode reader too that I have mentioned earlier on is also an input device. The scanner is also a device that allows pictures to be placed into a computer. We use scanners to scan pictures and other informations into the computer. It's also an input device. The microphone allows the user to record sounds as input to their computer. And now most laptops come with an already inbuilt microphone, especially the laptops. They have an input, inbuilt uh, microphone. But if you don't have a laptop with an inbuilt or a computer with an inbuilt uh, microphone, you can also go to the shop and buy yourself a computer microphone that you can use to record and the, and the microphone too is an input device. This is also a speaker. The speaker is an output device. They, we, are, we use the speakers are used to generate or also reproduce voice, music, and other sound. So when you play a sound on your computer or laptop, you hear it through the speakers. So the speaker is also an output device. We also have the sound card, as I indicated. If you don't have a proper sound card, or if you have a computer without a sound card, you cannot, the computer cannot. Uh, process a sound for you to hear on from your uh, uh, speaker. So they connect the speakers and also microphone to the computer. So the, your uh, your speaker is able to communicate with the processor or is able to co communicate with your computer using the sound card. The modem, that is the place where the computer is connected to the, to the phone line. So your computer is able to communicate or is able to connect to the internet through a modem. And most nowadays, most laptops, apart from connecting it using the, the, the wireless, you can also use a modem. And there are, pop, there are common uh, uh, modems. In Ghana, here we have a lot of our telecom companies who have manufactured modems. We have the MTN modem, we have the Vodafone modem, and even now uh, MTN have upgraded it into a new one, what they call the TurboNet. Uh, I, one can, com uh, can comfortably see that it's also another form of modem. But this one in, in, in a more advanced form. The network card, a circuit board that connects the computer to the rest of the network, usually using a special cables. So if you don't have a network card, your computer cannot communicate with other computers. So you are able to communicate with other computers or through the internet using a network card. But most especially, to mention this, most laptops come with an input network card. So as I indicated, computer has basically two components, that's the hardware and also the software component. So we are finished with the hardware, but the, the number, the list of the hardware component that I've given you is not exhaustive. You can also go 
and look for other hardwares because I can't remember I didn't mention Plotter. The Plotter too is an example of, uh, of, of, of an output device. Software, they are programmed that tell the computer what to do. It provides instructions that the CPU will need to carry out. DOS, that is disk operating system. These are typical examples of uh, system software. This software connects the, the hardware with the programs you want to run. And a typical example is the, the MS DOS, that's Microsoft DOS. It's a command line user interface. But nowadays, they are not popular. They are not popular as it was released. That's the MS DOS. 1.0 was released in 1981 for the IBM computer, but the uh, MS-DOS are not popular now because no, now most operating system that we use for our computers is the Windows operating system. This is an interface or, or a picture of MS-DOS. Uh, if you're using MS-DOS, you will not see the pictures or you will not see the interface like what you see on uh, with respect to Windows. There's also Windows. That is a family of operating system developed and produced by Microsoft. It provides a, a software graphical user interface. That is GUI used on IBM and other computers. So you, you are able to see pictures. You are able to see videos on your computer because you are using a Windows operating system. So know the difference between a Windows operating system and also MS-DOS. That is Microsoft uh, 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 Desk operating system. This is just an example of a Windows operating system, but this is just the screen, the picture that I'm using is just old. Uh, sorry, my network went off. So as I was saying, uh, let me share my screen for you. So this Windows is an old uh, Millennium Edition type of uh, uh, Windows. Okay, 